I've been incredibly healthy my whole life. I've never been to the hospital. I barely even go to the doctor. Everybody always says, like, appreciate your health. Like, that's the most important thing. And it is. And I was someone who appreciated my good health. Like, I didn't take it for granted. I know a lot of people have this experience, but it's never happened to me in my life where everything changed. There's one moment that I can pinpoint where my entire life changed in the space of two minutes. In the beginning of this whole process, um, it came to me that I kind of wanted to have a visual representation of all the love and support that I have in my life. Although the external circumstances seem so challenging, my primary experience was of being blessed and beloved. And I wanted to sort of capture that because I knew that there were going to be some more challenging times ahead and that I would need to draw on that for inspiration and strength. How I see this kind of unfolding is that we'll take the more personal background stuff and essentially kind of create pattern by ripping and placing. We'll figure it out as we go. There's no real wrong answer. As it comes together, we'll know better kind of what we're doing. This is actually a birthday card that my father wrote to me. He's a big one for cards, like he always wrote cards with really meaningful messages. This is a picture of my dad when he was 93. I mean like, he's pretty incredible for 93. My dad was 95 and his health had been failing. All of a sudden I got a call that he was going to the hospital and he had done surgery. I went to Connecticut, he made it through surgery, a nurse was inserting a feeding tube and I sort of just had this wave of like this is really hardcore and I passed out. When I woke up, the emergency room doctor came in and said when you fell and hit your head it caused a concussion, a seizure, a subdural hematoma um, and we need to go in immediately and relieve the pressure on your brain. We also found a large mass on the left side of left frontal lobe that possibly could be cancerous. Um, and at that point, everything stopped sort of making sense for a while. It was a couple of days until we got back to getting an MRI, having the conversation with the neurosurgeons, all that, when we found out that it was, um, the brain tumor was actually cancerous. I believe that it's serendipitous the way that it was found. I believe that my dad had something to do with that. My dad always took really great care of me. He was always concerned about taking great care of me and I feel like that was his last way of taking care of me is to help this come to light. Of course, the first thing I did, I said to my mom, I need my phone, I have to call Meng, you know? So I called Meng and said, I need you to take care of the restaurant, I need you to take care of the girls, because I don't know what's gonna happen. Worst conversation ever to hear that news. I've always admired her, but I admire now, now she's literally on a pedestal. Sarah Lucy, you know, she applied for a job at Blue Ginger. Almost instantaneously, we got along. It was just something about her energy that I loved. I would not have done this project, Blue Dragon, without Sarah. Who was here every freaking day besides Woody? It was Sarah. I mean, every day. She literally slept on that couch one day. She cared about everyone that she touched around her. She has this positive energy that is so freaking infectious. You know, we would go over there a bunch. I think initially we thought it was kindness because they were just opening. But then as we went more and more, and we got to know Sarah better, it just turned out that that was like, that was who she was. She'd stop by the dinner table, we'd talk for longer and longer every time we went, we got to know each other. What she brings is like a mom, stern when she had to be and kind when she was just naturally being herself. I would say that she is literally the epitome of, of graciousness and hospitality. Everything she did, she did from the goodness of her heart and just wanting to take care of people and that's something that she passed on to us. It's something every day that we focus on and we try to continue, you know, everything she's brought to this restaurant and just make her proud. So Sarah reached out to me. She told me, you know, exactly what had happened to her and explained to me the piece. I was immediately engaged and wanted to help her tell that story through a piece of art. As an artist, you have very few opportunities to create something that has such a deep impact on somebody's life. That strength, support, all the things that she's getting out of it are all the things that you hope that your art would do anyways. You just can't say no to something like that.
My idea was to sort of create a visual manifestation of all this love and support that I'm so lucky to have. And I wanted to sort of capture it somehow because I knew that there would be darker and more down times when I needed to sort of access that. Ari is a visionary, so he took it to the next level, and here we are. You just don't come across people that often that can remain so positive, so consistently, under such dire kind of circumstances, and it's, it's been pretty, uh, pretty amazing. I'm paraphrasing an old Zen story. It talks about a farmer whose, I'm going to say, horse runs away. And everybody says to him, like, that's so sad, that's too bad that happened to you. And he says, we'll see. And the horse comes back and everybody says, oh, that's such great news. And he says, we'll see. And then his son comes and you know, rides the horse and breaks his leg. And so everybody says, that's really bad news. And he says, we'll see. And then the army comes to collect his son for the draft, but he can't go because his leg's broken. So everybody says, you know, that's such great news. He says, we'll see. She hit her head on the floor and got a subdural hematoma, and everybody was like, that's really bad news. And then within that, she got a diagnosis that she never would have found because she's asymptomatic. And so to me, it's like, there's that we'll see part. How lucky are we all that that weird, sort of scary, horrible situation happened so that this diagnosis could come to light and be dealt with. You want to say it's really horrible that this diagnosis happened, but we'll see, you know, because I think that in the end there's going to be like amazing, beautiful things that happen for her. And so we'll see all that stuff too. While I highly respect Western medicine, I believe that there are more options out there. So that's why I've chosen a big nutritional overhaul. I am taking CBD oil, two different kinds of acupuncture. Then there's Reiki and energy medicine. So all of that is strengthening from within so that my immune system can help my body handle the, the cancer. How are you? Good. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm so excited to be here. The most true aspect of this experience for me has been gratitude. I have everything. I have everything. There's just, there's no way that I could be more supported. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. It's so amazing. Oh my God, Ari, it's so beautiful. The intention of this piece is to create a visual representation of all the love and support made manifest through the healing journey. To highlight one's ability to choose perspective and outlook on all things. To activate deeper levels of consciousness by tapping into creative power. To use challenge as a platform for growth and inspiration. To access now for strength in the process and later as a reminder of this moment to superimpose an image of what comes next, to help me and others to heal. In the two years following this original video production, Sarah continued to create meaning and fulfillment in her life, even while experiencing an acceleration of physical symptoms. During that time, Sarah traveled to places she'd yearned to see and to places that were familiar and beloved. She got to experience India, Morocco, and Nepal for the first time, and revisited Costa Rica and Portland, Oregon several times over. Ever the connected heart, Sarah made it a point to commune every day with loved ones, whether they were family, friends, or fellow travelers on the cancer journey. As always, she gave freely of herself and remained a listening ear a wise advisor, a loving heart, and a keen observer of all that is funny and inspiring in the world. On December 23rd, 2018, Sarah was admitted to Regional Hospice in Danbury, Connecticut. The seven weeks she spent there before her death were as rich and inspiring as the rest of her life had been. Family and friends flocked from around the world to bid their farewells. Among them was Sarah's three-week-old niece, Alice, who arrived from Oregon bringing a tangible sense of peacefulness. Sarah's longtime friend and boss, Ming Tsai, cooked a beautiful meal in the hospice kitchen. Her mother's theater friends showed up to sing and play favorite tunes on the piano. A friend played a song he had written for her and another gave her a live-streamed bedside concert. Together, Sarah's loved ones filled her room with positive energy through ritual, song, poetry, prayer, and chanting. Some of us I know are bound to die. Oh, my love, how it breaks my heart to say goodbye. 
Throughout this time, staff members of Regional Hospice became an extension of Sarah's family, falling in love with her beautiful and expressive smile and gorgeous blue eyes, which continued to communicate long after her words failed. The doctors, nurses, social workers, cleaning staff, volunteers, and chaplains cared for her collectively and individually, guiding her through this most important transition of her life. In her last days, Sarah moved beyond aspiration and into the embodiment of grace and gratitude. She died on February 8, 2019, just as she had lived, on her own terms, with great courage, and surrounded by an immeasurable amount of love. She will be missed. I see the sun for the first time in April in North Carolina and I see the sky in a different light but it was always there for me to find it I'm not a perfect example no I had to learn my patience and I learned to wait from a woman who knew that hearts are as grateful as we make them. to take what we're given and learn from the souls who stand behind us and I learned of grace from a woman who knew compassion not to talk will define us how do we do this now we keep on moving day by day even when we don't know I see the April green, I'll know Summer always springs from snow And I won't let tomorrow go No, I won't let tomorrow go Turn to your neighbor Tell her you love her How often do we count our blessings on our own? Now we will have to lean on each other it takes such distance to show me my home I see the sun for the first time In April in North Carolina And I learned of faith from a woman Who knew that love was always here for us to find it That love was always here to find it.